let's talk about uh, today let's talk about window design door door design so right now at this time we've got a lot of the details we talked just a little bit about electrical system how we we run a may run wires through the utility channel so that the electrical is built into the the wall modules that we're building at this time so that at the end of the day wall modules contain electrical insulation structure exterior sheeting and then after we finish the house we put on the interior sheeting and for the interior walls we we keep them largely as frames there's some that because they overlap at seams the interior panels must be put in like once in place except for some edge ones which oh there's only one panel and they do not overlap like there's wall sections for example around the staircase where there might be a wall section that's only one panel long in which case you don't have overlap and we can pre-build those kinds of panels anytime there is not a continuing of two panels next to each other and there's there's a few places in the house where that applies or in cases where we start an interior wall panel and we build next to it well the first one we can always put on it's the subsequent one that we need to attach to that through this little lip it's overlap it's there's a little overlap between interior panels on interior panels there is no overlap we're actually actively cutting away the overlap so that we can build and then seam it up later build it as modules in the first place otherwise to to cut like all your plywood to shape like around the windows doors and other details it takes a lot of time so in order to save time we're talking about what kind of numbers we're at but I mean if we can get the reality the, the absolute clear reality of a 500 hour number for one of these houses then I think the, the basic statement is we've got it made I mean that's a that could be a robust business model and after that you can still talk about optimization with um, improved design and streamlining everything still potentially 3d printing some parts to, to reduce costs and time further for the doors and windows there's important water sealing details so in general what happens with modular wall panels let me get my camera on so are people seeing me as well there yeah, yeah. Um, in general for the wall panels okay modularity is the big concept that's what allows us to have large teams so if we're building even in a in a case of industrial scale building where the business model is okay there's a there's a city so you know thinking big there's an entire city they've they've got mandates for affordable housing they need a hundred or a thousand houses questions that arise are really how how effectively and quickly can we train different people from already existing builders okay so builders will know how to wield a hammer all the tools or do plumbing and electrical so that could be a rapid training program for people who already have various skills and then we just teach the design and we can deploy at scale if we are talking about solving housing for uninitiated people like ourselves in apprenticeship maybe students at universities uh, developing training programs for apprentices or just tech school training uh, then it's a longer training period maybe it's like a like a two-year I'm thinking um, probably like a two-year would be an easy way just st standard like two way two-year tech school which could do this and I do believe we we are clearly making this easier because unlike regular tech school uh, just the streamlining and the de degeneracy aspect meaning that we're reducing very actively to okay what's what is sufficient to get you a high quality build 
that's what we do okay so but you still have to do everything by the book like you cannot do any inferior inferior design or things that do not pass codes this is all about code approval and uh, our milestone our next milestone right now is to get this this version for a build in September so September in Kansas City so transitioning the regular workshop to do most of it here and then we can explore okay now we can transport all our built pre-built modules for a rapid build awesome that could be one one way to do a revenue model another way to do it is build it all on site or build it in a micro factory so all kinds of options are, are possible let's talk about the details for the the window ceiling of windows and doors so let's let's jump jump into the docs and actually put those details in and I'll start going through some of the completed more complete modules in more detail so you can just itemize it into okay here's all the missing details from the point where we are right now we're at the point that we have built most of the frames we have also yesterday installed the sill plate which is great which means that right now the wall modules could go right on so that's that's where we're at right now um, but we do want to finish them more, i.e. put the insulation in and other details. So let's look at what all those other details are and let's do the exercise of where we're actually collaboratively uh, try to do that uh, within CAD so, so that we also get more CAD practice. So I would go to SH2, Seed Home 2, CAD. In one section that is, let's see, select the details first to second wall modules in sweet home let's see where these are here select modules that are finished these ones right here which are wall modules let us do that okay so sharing the screen wall modules LOD 400, 500. So these these ones here were built a little. That's like a couple of months ago. Now, where is this LOD for? This is here. Wall modules here. This section. So in it, I kind of went to the further detail of each of the modules to show exactly what's in one. Let's take a look at. Uh, s start with a very simple one and. And how do we do this? Because this is something we're going to have to do in a workshop, right? So everybody's awareness in terms of catching this, what the construction is. Uh, I feel like, I mean, I think a lot of the, the issue of how, how we learn is if you haven't built this before, you haven't seen the materials, you haven't felt them, it's probably difficult to imagine all this. So, um, I mean, ideally, it's like we do that in a workshop. We, uh, we take as much notes as possible. I'm trying to figure out how do we process all this information like note taking towards kinds of cheat sheets but okay say we so let's ask a meta question here so we've got say the eight foot wall panel I'll go through some of the details but okay finishing details like what, what are the other elements around it but how do we I mean do you guys have any suggestions of okay we go into the workshop how does it how does that process become more spontaneous and and self-organizing uh, rather than me saying okay now do this now do that is that possible or or is that kind of a heavy-handed leadership or, or more heavy-handed like more involvement necessary to do this i'm just trying to get some feedback on that is it um or what would be the best way so okay say we're building one of these do we what do we do build one together all, all of us for one something like that that's that's kind of how we we did do it right like with the the yeah. first initial modules we just took the nine foots and we all just built them together slowly and it took a little bit longer but we all really understood how to do the nine foots well at least according to the design that yeah laid out, so so maybe just do one do one together um catch that process so okay so we explore this here we do some uh, cad work just some details and then we can go in there because the things that are on our plate Okay, so it's then the quality control of all these modules. So we, we have like pretty much all of them built. There's maybe a, a few a few that are not, but maybe what we can do is um, 
go through this finishing process and maybe in this finishing process we can say okay well first of all let's make sure we know where every single module is so now we have the rack of the all the modules are in, in a rack now so we can maybe number them uh, so it's immediately visible where each one is and possibly rearrange okay like go 1 through 24 and so forth so we know exactly where to go and we're not spending all this time just going you know running around the workshop trying to find the right one so maybe organize that and um, maybe that that would be the step number one to identify and organize and then I would say let's pick one let's or a couple that we say okay we know it's this one we're gonna finish that one completely we'll go through a quality control list finish that completely like to every single detail with including what we're gonna talk about right now with the uh, um, all the other pieces and we'll go from there and then we can, but we also have to look at okay we're, we're gonna have to put in the electrical boxes that we talked about that the other day we'll just uh, nail them in uh, run some wire from one to the next and call it a day and then finish it when we're inside the house but that we have to uh, there's a bit of detail so probably the best thing is like as we go through this make sure we're documenting okay here's the complete checklist for everyone but uh, so let's build. Yeah, we'll build. We'll build one together. It's like Wall that's, that's the best. And then um, foundation and roofing and the floors and, and joists and all that. I'm just trying to think of the different like components that kind of group together. Yeah. And then there's a certain rationale that goes behind designing some of these. So like, you know, you have the top blocking, front blocking, you put the panels on. There's you know, there's just the smaller details that. I think that we didn't have up front, but if, if they were in the cheat sheet somewhere in a, like a longer kind of manual, I think that would probably help as well. More detailed cheat sheet for everyone, every module. Uh, just around some of the, the other finer points. Like they can build the module, but then like the like the utility channels to go in, there needs to be a certain way that it's done so the panel actually works. It, it meets the design. Mm -hmm. And then... The, the different lengths of the blocking and why the lengths are needed and I guess just more of the the why behind it. That would be a separate document though, no? Like say so you're on one side you're building, the other is like how you're building and understanding the building, but when, when you work from a blueprint mm -hmm. it's just they'll get TMI to too much info on that. Like we probably want to sp split it. There's a that's fair. So like like the blueprint just build this versus build this and then you understand build this because like this because of this these yeah. different things. The because is the kind of stuff we're trying to capture like right now maybe in the discussions. But it is it's true that probably every one of these uh, the whys, the the hows, the design part the build part, they kind of each need their modular cheat sheet, like, okay, uh, well, at the end of the day, you've got, you definitely have a build cheat sheet with essential details, no more, because otherwise, if you put anything else on it, you get confused and you might not read the right thing. Right, you don't need to put, like, like too much detail, but just enough to, you, so you can do the building, you can do the build of a module, and you can understand why the module is built in a certain way, you know. Like, obviously you can build it and just hammer it together, but then you have to have the understanding if you really want to be successful at it. You do. And so what's the information architecture that allows that to happen? So definitely there's cheat sheets for build. How best to, what do we want to do for the overall design rationale for everything? Where does that go into? I mean, there's a design guide that we're working on that shows, okay, here's how so at the top level how far away do you think that is so it's like the simple and then technical like how do you meet in the middle because like the, the simple is the cheat sheet like just hammer this together versus the technical specification which is like we had to build it this way because of the code and because of the design mm -hmm. of the structure and the, the low bearing of the entire of the entire thing is um, what we need to consider all the way at the far yeah I mean there's uh you can go atomically through, like you can have a cheat sheet for like why this is designed this way. You can you can point to all these things, but that would repeat itself a lot of times. 
So you probably want a more gen generic design doc that talks about the whole thing because uh, there's going to be a lot of overlap right. because of the modules. Now you need those excru that excruciating detail for each module when many people build it because you have to build that to those specific sizes and everything else. Whereas for the rationale, um, that's a thing you study beforehand. Anyway, um, we definitely want to have a design guide. We definitely want to have like a like Katrina's building book where she tried to capture all the different details of why it's designed a certain way and what, how it meets codes and stuff like that. So there's different different levels of detail. Um, okay, well let's go to let's go let's open up a module here. So so go to say the eight foot wall. Let's let's open it up. Um, so let's paste that. In the zoom. Now where did my zoom go? share I can't put things in the chat okay but in a chat now for the zoom there's the free cat file let's download it download the thing and let's take a look at what next we need to do can we maybe do a uh, okay so once again going back to the collaborative note-taking thing can we just open up a page and atomically like we were trying to do with the free cat details like for example here on page two that's mastering FreeCAD basics. Uh, we had this other two pages that were. Can you share the screen? Here? Yeah. Okay, there's a check. So, so we had pages like I think this the most effective thing was things like just atomic breakdown of all the points that you always have to check through. Um, so okay, let's bring them up here. So we've got these just talking about the knowledge structuring here um, mastering basics and here we're saying okay atomic points of info and we're saying okay already we have um, if we, let's remember that or number that so we've got 22 on the first page no 24 on the first page uh, let's start this at 25 um, so we got 28 points of information that allows us to do wall panels. Here we have FreeCAD basics, the, all the things that allow us to work very effectively within FreeCAD atomically broken down. Let's do one page like this. Um, and call it, so wall module overall design. So first, start with the framing. Start with framing, which was the 20, start with, um, okay, the 28 points of framing. Okay, next, what else do we have? So let's maybe get rid of this stuff here. What else is there? So we open up our file. Uh, so this module here, uh, what am I doing there? Okay, download that one. So, so download that one, the eight foot wall. <clears throat> so this is the second story, so it's eight foot, eight footers. And let's look at what else is in there and uh, convert that <clears throat> into cheat sheets. All right. 
So can we <clears throat> can we look at some of these other details? And actually, the part tree. Uh, what oh, I was just doing, doing here. here. Okay, can okay. Just, 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 should be needed. So actually what happens, so in these modules, in that section, so this is not what we've been working on lately. This is these modules which actually have just about all the atomic detail of the, all the other parts. So there's, if you look at the part tree, there's insulation, so the fiberglass. And it describes that as R19 fiberglass insulation. It's shows you actually the length and the first number is actually so this is actually I was trying to do like this explicit BOM generatable kind of a nomenclature here so all simple parts the parts that you extract from the part tree are actually things that go into a bill of materials this is an itemized list so R19 fiberglass 93 inch one so that's the first one. So, so 93 inches of that fiberglass insulation. The second one is on the other side. Third one is in the middle. So these are these bats of insulation. Um, so let's strip. Well, let's go to... So insulation, how long are you going to, so what do you do? You got a roll of insulation, what are you going to do? You're going to go out there to uh, the big table with all the supplies and we're going to be cutting for the eight foot wall, how, how, how long are they going to be? So that info in the, in the free cut file says it's 93 inch, so that makes sense, right? It's 93 inches minus the three inches top and bottom plates, right? So total is 96. Okay. So 93 inch sections of insulations, sections of fiberglass insulation. For a regular panel, how many of those? There's three bays, right? Three per module, yep. So say we take off the front face, yeah, you can see the pink stuff there. Let's hide that, hide those and behind what we have Let's make this all transparent. Um, well, let's make the face transparent on the back side. Um, we would want to add this to the master file eventually, but Maybe maybe not right now. Let's let's just <laughs> take it. Take this. Because there yeah, there should be. So this is um yeah. So this is a little older, and that's before the blocking was put in. Then, so yes, good observation. This would need to be updated to the current status of blocking. Um insulation. Second detail. So this piece here that's yeah so we're doing house wrap. Uh, house wrap so on the outside basically a weather barrier that allows water to drip down the exterior side if it ever gets under the, the plywood. Uh, it's breathable. Now how okay if we've got a 4 by 8 panel what do we want to do here? We want to wrap it around the edges a little bit. So wrap it around the front and back but also on the bottom it, this is going to be overlapping to the first floor so actually the bottom part of the, of the house wrap an important point is it actually sticks down all the way so we don't even cut the house wrap it's 10 foot rolls so it's going to be sticking about two feet down below because it has to kind of skirt over the second story platform and actually attach over the first story panel o overlap over that so let's write that down just make that an explicit point that we never forget so on our checklist so 
here we would have house wrap we have two kinds there's um, there is nine foot wide and ten foot wide well nine foot wide is good for the, the bottom because there's are nine foot panels F for the ten foot wide interestingly the wider house wrap goes on the smaller panels so because that's to overlap the bottom floor so larger house wrap, larger size house wrap. And house wrap is what we were standing upon, like we put that on the foundation just to walk on there so we didn't get the foundation dirty there too. Um, some old house wrap we had. Uh, larger house wrap goes on smaller panels, smaller eight foot panels, the second floor. So, so if I ask you, why do we put all this <clears throat> repeat? So, the 10 foot wide insulation. Question first is, what, I ask you, we've got the 8 foot panel, which, which house wrap are you going to use on it for the 8 foot panel? 10 feet. 10 feet. Okay. And it's going to hang down 2 feet from the top panel. So, point 0.5. House wrap hangs down two feet from top panel. Great. We do that. Now what's the detail? Like how do we wrap it on top? Um, what is that at the top over the top floor panel? It's going to be roof. Well, there's actually going to have to be a little more, a little strip more because there's going to be siding there as well, the exterior siding. So we're going to overlap that. Um, should probably stick out maybe like yeah. When we think about it, you have the now the roof sections, which is it's going to be like 16 or 18 inches, and we do want to wrap that with house wrap as well. So ideally, we'd have six inches sticking out the top of the top panel, I'd say. Because you still have to make that overlap. Otherwise, you'd have to get under the outside panel to make it overlap. So there's two ways to do it. One is to one is to leave some sticking out so you can overlap it, or leave the panel a little loose so you can slip that in, that house wrap underneath it. But now that that would be at height up there. So we're working on a roof like that's like second story. So probably I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe do that. Maybe just leave it sticking out. Don't worry about like taking off the panel like on that. Just have it stick out for safety reasons. So let's write that point down. Stick it out because the overlap that you want is like six inches or so, um, which means we reduce how much it's dribbling, dripping down, dripping, <laughs> dripping down. It's like 18. In we've got 18 inches left. Wait, uh, 18 inches. Yes, because we're sticking six inches up above. 18 inches going to be enough for us to to do it? Yeah, we'd have to uh, just to show a little diagram here. So, just to clarify this point, um, Let's just uh, fit a little diagram. Because um, before, and we're going to use the hammer stapler like we used yesterday to, to put on the, the house wrap. Let's like nail, nail this detail so there's like no, you know, we can go through this checklist and nobody has a like, question. I think a lot of times before what, what was happening is there's a number of details and because we never really wrote them down, I think they keep on kind of getting missed here and there. So I, the hope is with this list here, we're, we're not going to miss any of these details. We can go against this checklist and maybe make a cheat sheet out of it too. So you got your, say, top story, 
Got your bottom story uh, panels. But what's between them? You've got the you've got the uh, second story platform, the, basically the flooring here, like this, maybe like top plates and stuff like that. But on top is the roof too, the, where the actual roof roof structure, similar to the second story structure, like that. Well, so then your your house wrap. Let's, let's draw that in white, maybe, or like yellow like yellow or something. Um, here we said, okay, we want to overlap until we reach down to, to this one, which remember the panel on the first one is only down to like the exterior siding is only up. So that we should make that taller to represent that it's actually like nine feet, right? So here's our, say, exterior panel, which only covers partially up, like up to only like eight feet and let's make that the reddish color which is kind of the house color. So this thing has to go up cover at least some of this so this entire thing is gonna have house wrap so the house wrap level is gonna be up to like right there and just you know just ending with that edge there so that's gonna be how high that's gonna be so this house wrap has to overlap this one this one goes um, this one goes above it um, why so that water coming down from this one goes above this one it can't be something like this right you gotta do this it overlaps the one underneath uh, so this is that's 12 inches about that's the second story platform so we're going to need at least 12 inches. So 18 inches should be good. Should be good if we stick. So, so this one we said we're going to go like maybe 6 inches up. Um, if we put this all the way up and it's 10 feet, we don't have enough to cover the bottom there. Not enough. Like you've got, if you've got the dimensions there. So this is just like working with materials and okay, strategy, like how do you wrap this thing with house wrap in a way that uses existing pieces and allows you to do modularity. So we're adding all these components here. So on this one, yeah, let's say we've got the house wrap to there. We'll fix that there. And we have so what what size of house wrap do we use there? Yeah. Does it only come in those two sizes? Or? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like they have these wide wide sizes like this. Then they have like narrower stuff too. But those are the big ones. Um, so nine foot panels use nine foot wide house wrap. Okay, so that's here, that's this checkpoint here. That's the nine foot panels on the bottom floor. Um, so this one, like ideally we would stress, stretch this one here all the way across like that, but I don't think we're gonna make it because this one is already eight. This one's a foot and that one's a foot. So it, you always have like a little bit missing somewhere. So let's just do this, your second, you know, the overlap like this with the six inches sticking up and then we're gonna have to just cut a strip like a little bit more uh, for whatever is up here and that's gonna be more like 16 inch there's we already know it's 12 inches plus four inches of foam of the foam insulation so yeah there's just gonna be a thin strip way up there I don't see how we can get around that uh, this one just won't reach so kinda like three layers uh, so we can say house wrap which is the 10 feet goes on the smaller 8 foot panel so um, so then specifically we say overlap 6 inch on top of 8 foot panel overlap 18 inches 
on bottom of eight foot panel. So that's what this this show here represents. It's dripping down all the way to like here. <coughs> it's going to be approximately like that. That's the second story platform. Let's label that. And share that for people to edit. Uh, can help edit that too. Um, so second story platform that's here. Basically floor platform. And this is the bottom panel. Mm -hmm. So how the wrap hangs two feet down from top panel, not exactly, we said 18 inches. So uh, there's a, so let's look at, okay, house wrap. So thin strip goes at the top. That's going to be about, uh, about 16 inches or so. It's about, about 16 inch goes at the very top. Uh, it needs to be cut. Okay. All right, so we've got the house wrap on, on these modules. We're documenting that. So let's talk more about insulation. So what, what other details about insulation do we know? It has facing. So house wrap plus and you guys saw it has facing on a paper face um, with, so stick that out that's convenient to have it sticking out so the insulation doesn't get dirty and also you can staple that to the to the edges to the all the base so insulation has paper face uh, hammer stapler staple that to the framing. Yeah? So you put it insulation in each bay. Mm -hmm. What's the paper face facing you? Yeah, facing us. Yeah. On the back the the external exterior fiber. Yeah. It's already in place. Yeah. So let's talk about the exterior plywood. Uh, we can we can do that. So we've got all the panels there in a pile outside. We can take the exterior plywood and hang it down 1.1 inch, about one and an eighth. Um, so before that, we say attach exterior panel, um, hang down. So you have to know which is top and bottom and bottom, attach exterior panel, hang down 1.1 inch. Uh, pay attention to <laughs> up and down. So this is, um, this is for the uh, nine, foot panels. nine foot panels and oh, the, the, the other ones also have a little overhang too because you want to do a drip edge over so if the top panels are sitting on the wall like that you still want it to be dripping over instead of like water getting into the crack so you still want the same um, pay attention to up and down so now for the say um, let's itemize that one for the nine foot panel how do you tell up and down for the nine foot panel how do you tell which is up and down and and actually, which side do you attach that exterior plywood to? How do you define? How do you identify that? Because larger on one side than the other. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, I think the the ultimate metric. Yeah, it is. So, say you put it in place. How do you tell? Like, what are you looking for? You put it on. Assume, assume we quality control the thing. And we say, okay, this is at the right place. You know, okay, we know everything is good. It's squared up. 
And by the way, the, the, the plywood is going to make your frame square because it's already square. That's what's going to happen. How do we tell? How do we tell? You have it on a, on a, because you, you can attach it both ways, right? You can put it to the top blocking or bottom blocking if you're one side or the other. Well, so, so it has to hang down 1.1 inch and then the top of it has to match with the, the top blocking on one side. So if you put it 1.1 down and mm -hmm. you put it to the top blocking and the top blocking is a little short, you'll be able to see that. Yeah, you'll see it. So where exactly on the top blocking? Halfway. 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 Halfway is the key metric. So the quality control point to verify that you've got. So verify. that you have exterior ply on the correct side by um, when you're hanging one when hung down by 1.1 inch you are at midpoint of top blocking and it should not be at the midpoint when you use the other because those dimensions were a little different mm -hmm. so that should be obvious if it's not then we might have to look at okay are these blockings in the right position and that would be take you back to a little more quality control midpoint so the midpoint is the important part I think that's about it because it won't work out on the other side. So, okay, then you know that. Is it on the midpoint or does it cover it? I didn't build any of the nine walls, but I remember in the cat file, it was originally at the midpoint, but then it was updated to cover the top Oh, uh, Hopefully not. So if you look at page 22 in the same doc, 120 Design Desen Lessons, day 15, okay. look at that. That is accurate. And that should be upper exterior. Okay. Uh, I know we covered it, but that was I thought that was for the bottom. We did cover it, and it does get covered, but on the bottom. Oh, it goes so all the way to the end of the bottom. Oh, yeah, okay. it does. So that, that is highly relevant for now. Let's take that up to emphasize it. Okay. Now, what goes on first, the, the next to your plywood or the the house wrap? House wrap. Yeah, house wrap goes first because uh, it goes right under the um. Yeah. So now we get to exterior panel. So here, so here we covered the detail of, um, so fiberglass, that's easy, but fiberglass would be after, after you've got the, so I, I'll, I'll move that, the fiberglass that goes after. So first, house wrap stapling. Second is exterior panel. So insulation is third. So we've got that um, house wrap stapling, exterior panel. Now, here, depending on whether you're working with an upper or lower floor modules, just pay attention to which 
which role you're using and do those three or four points make that clear like say you take one panel versus the other when you say you use this as your cheat sheet well you know there's two first yeah you remember point two yeah nine foot panels use nine foot wide house wrap yeah um, larger size house wrap 10 foot goes on smaller 8 foot panels yes so you can read point 4 and 3 and say okay I better make sure which which one is which for what, for what. the 10th strip we don't have to worry about yet because that's later on once we're actually up at the house um, but actually no there's, there's no reason why we do it up at the house because it's dangerous up there why don't we do that attach that when we're on the ground and we're preparing how we prepared the, the long joist uh, long joists on the roof and second story floor so um, but this is pre-done it's a pre-done as a module as a uh, rim joist rim joist well it's roof joist roof rim joist as part of a roof, roof rim joist Yeah, and that's definitely de desirable because if you're up on the ladders or like hanging over it, you want to minimize your ha time on the roof for safety. You want to minimize your time on ladders for safety. Ladders and roofs are the two highest accident points on housing. So, yes, if we can do that step on the ground, let's do it. So we got. Uh, so I think we're good on the exterior panel, but let's talk about screw schedule. So the screw schedule would be. Um, we can do one foot throughout right now and we probably can like if you talk about like real good stabilization for hurricanes then you just put many more nails in it at the end like they go down to like I think like four inches or something if you want to be super uh, windproof um, because it's really the sheeting that's tying everything together uh, the framing does only so much but the framing could rack rack on you like that uh, so once you actually put in the sheathing it prevents the racking part and that's why windows if you put windows in they can rack large doors and windows they can rack more uh, because they don't have the, the whole panel just buttoning it all up okay so insulation um, wait where do we catch do we catch the yeah it has paper okay yeah we caught that there Insulation has the paper on the outside facing out. Hammer staple that. You hammer staple the paper because the paper is kind of overlapping a little bit. Hammer sta staple paper of insulation to the framing. What else do we know about the the insulation? It's it's going to be about 3.5 inches thick. There's there's the fit. No, not 3.5, that's for interior. It's going to be wider, 5.5. So make sure you're using the 5.5 insulation. There's two types of insulation out there. There's 5.5 and 3.5, depending on what, whether we're using 2x4s or 2x6s. So, so observe that there is there's insulation for 2x4s for 2x4 framing that's 3.5 inch thick insulation or 2x6 framing 5.5 or what else we also know that in the roof we're putting in 12 inch 11.25 for the the roof that's going to go between the, the roof joists so there's three types actually in the pile what about for like the doors, like the, the header plates? We just ripped up some from the existing one. Okay. That's all. Yeah, just ripped ripped little sections. So I'm gonna write and there is there is the twelve inch for the roof joists. So when you grab that they're all in like these big rolls. Take a look at it. Is it two by four? Is it uh, two by six or two by twelve for two by twelves? 
what else do we know that we have to know about it? Don't get it wet. Uh, that that stuff will kind of like collapse on you. Like you don't want to get it wet outside. Um, how do you staple it? Like how often? What do we do? Every foot. Yeah, every foot. Staple it every foot. That's important to know because you don't want to just put like four on a corner or like every few inches because it would be just wasting staples. Staple every foot or so. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure it's it lays in there firmly. Um, so the order is um, well if the siding is on the outside and then there's insulation and there's the wood you might think like just don't get confused thinking that oh yeah well because the the wood is first it goes on the panel first so then you say oops I forgot to throw my insulation under uh, ideally if you did that you would go like oh, okay I'm gonna staple that insulation you can also staple it to the wood does that make any sense Is there any reason to staple it to the wood as opposed to the frame? Because you could do that. What's easier? I think we've always stapled it to the to the frame. Well, the reason there is because we wrap it around the frame too, so it's easier that way. On the edges, we wrap it so that's that would be another a detail to cover. How much do you go around the edges of the panels? So let's cover that, and that you go enough to go around them, and then just bend around the back, and then we'll we'll tape it a little or staple it at the back. Let's write that down, because that relates to a further point once we make the full seams later. So so wrap um, house wrap around edges. So this is side edges because the top and bottom we already discussed okay there's overlap overhang just a bunch of inches up above wrap house wrap wrap around edges to the back so you're basically like one inch so you're still on the back side by one inch so that you can actually staple it back there around edges and 1.5 inch more on back side, which is now you, you got to the interior side if you're talking about exterior panels. On edges. Now, what about no, interior, no. interior panels? Do they have house wrap? <laughs> no, <laughs> so actually remember that. <laughs> like, don't. Put, uh, we have to write that down. No house wrap on interior panels. This is we're getting into every single detail. Because there's you're assuming that your interior is doesn't have like condensation issues. There's definitely condensation issues when you outside, cold and hot. You've got condensation. Just humidity on a cold surface means it condenses. So there's there's a thermal gradient. Uh, your house is warm, uh, outside may be cold, or the other way around, and you, you definitely get condensation outside. So no house wrap on inside of house because it's a controlled room environment. You've got heating and cooling, which makes it that you don't have high humidity issues inside a house, ideally. So you get air conditions in the in winter, you know, summer rather, winter you got heat, Winters are typically very dry, so you don't have condensation issues in the winter. So we covered insulation. What about um, what next? We cover the edges, and that will be <coughs> top and bottom wall modules naturally if we are there's a detail there if you're dripping the 
the house wrap down, how do you take care of the thing if, if you're also wrapping it around the corners? How does that work? It doesn't really. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, how do you... You have your panels that are wrapped tightly. Mm. You have to... I think we <coughs> just need to slit the insulation. Can you picture this issue? So you wrapped it like a box around the edges, but your your bottom and top stuff has to either hang or go above. So I think you kind of got to like cut the corner there's two um, so that you do have that full skirt, little details there. So it's wrapping it entirely, like the front and the back? So like you can't just a little bit, just a little bit on the back, just a one inch so you can staple it. So, because this gets into how the panels attach to each other. So let's maybe take the next slide and just, just explore this detail. Because now we get into, I mean, this is all the real details. How do you get water infiltration away from the seams? Because we're building in seams which we're bonding together with lag bolts. Let, let's talk about seams. All the complexity happens at seams or details like that. Because um, to build the modules, that's cool, but then all the other details that make it actually work and be code legal and, and not get you moisture in the house. So, and this is actually where we spent time developing all this stuff because different ways to do it. So if you look at, so I'm going back to concept design, and the basic problem statement there was this is what we're trying to figure out. Like, this is the problem statement. So that's the CD eco home. You're looking at a panel. Okay, so you take one one of these corner panels, right? So this is your panel, but this is um, it's the detail. This is actually what we're following right now. So let's zoom in on that. So I discussed the insulation and your, and your wall panels. The the thing with the cross, it's the frame member that's going. You're looking down at the wall from the top. You've got the front sheeting. You see in this detail here, it shows this overlap, but we're we're getting rid of that. We're cutting off this edge. There's like a little bit here and a little bit there that we cut off, because in practice it's not possible. Like once you make the modules, you cannot butt them together accurately enough to make that seam work. If you're doing the sheathing separately, as an after step, you can do that that's what it's designed to do with that seam but in the way we build it which is modules we don't need that seam and we're accommodating for that by sealing that after with another batten so we use these battens here um, if we zoom in a little bit that's trim that's like one by four trim this is self-adhesive waterproof barrier so that's this rubber this rubber rubbery tape and what happens is when you put that rubbery tape well first of all the the panels here we show screws not not screws but nails we use screws either is fine so what happens to this self-adhesive waterproof barrier why is it there why why isn't the batten enough well first of all there's a film barrier thing about this tape is uh, if you look at it if you puncture it with a nail which you have to because you're putting on the batten it self seals around it uh, so that's that's what we use uh, we actually don't use rubberized asphalt we're using um, actually a little better stuff because we want to make sure we get these details this is good but if it's super cold or super hot it does not work well and if it's very cold it tends to not stick and super hot temperature tends to melt like super hot means like like Texas and like direct sun maybe black 
black surface somewhere uh, like above a like close <laughs> yeah like pretty high pretty hotter than you can touch uh, the rating on this here is it's like only for it says to apply it if you look at that do I have any specifications um, doesn't doesn't say it, but it, you can't do it in freezing weather but the concept there is this rubberized tape we use butyl tape it seals after you put and screws through the the trim because how do you attach the trim well you gotta screw it down so the, you'd get water holes that's water penetration so the the purpose of the, so the SAWP the weather tape self-adhesive waterproof barrier SAWP it's called um, yeah you see all the gaps so we've got now we've got a sill gasket between the modules so we did the sill gasket on the sill now between the modules you're gonna have little gaps too you wanna put it on there too uh, foam sealer and so we wrap the house you see this broken line there that's the house wrap and it ends just wrapped up a little bit on the inside you know so you can hammer staple it okay so you've got this waterproof barrier here in blue and on the back just a little bit of tape standard house wrap tape which is the red stuff it looks like like uh, tape for boxes shipping so that there goes there uh, where do we get to when we make the finished modules we get up to our house wrap the front panel but not this we don't put the butyl tape or trim that's after we put the house stand the house up in place but that's the detail and then that's the interior sheathing now the interior sheathing we do overlap using those little overlaps like shown here we do have that on the inside because it wants to be neat and continuous inside without we're not using battens on the inside um, because we put those panels on later let me put them on later because I mentioned about code inspection schedule the electrical inspector needs to look inside your panels your panels cannot be closed at the inspection point for electrical so that's why we're able to use the interior sheathing as it should be uh, with the overlaps uh, so um, but that gets into if you can picture this in your mind like you, we wrap this house wrap around what happens as far as dripping down over the um, well the second store pan second story panels we said they're dripping down like 18 inches to cover what's below I think the only way we can do it is kinda like when we do it in place we'll see better but um, maybe probably you gotta slit it because you, you see the issue there it's like if it's wrapped around it'll be like uh, you'll have seam you'll have seams going in between panels uh, so what you want to do is probably leave the probably leave oh yeah so you probably have to leave one side yeah yeah, yeah I think that's what we're doing there one side has to be left unwrapped around the back I believe I didn't even see this before but yeah like when you look at this how do you make this drip down uh, when we're in a workshop we'll, we'll take a look at it let's let's build the second story uh, panel and we'll see what's the easiest way they can drip down the skirt uh, while overlapping the panel next door so obviously if you go like this around the panel if you just wrap around the panel like it's kinda hard like this, this seems below bottom right and bottom left you're gonna be still end up with seams so we'll take a look at that maybe what we have to do there is just use some more um, house wrap and just maybe put cover those maybe like a long strip after that but let's take a look at that inside as far as the detail um, you see the issue you guys see the issue the walls before you wrap say again you can insulate the walls before you wrap everything up 
Well, so the panels we're putting into place and they have to overlap with their, their house wrap. So the only way you could do this without getting into these details is if you leave all the exterior si uh, siding off when you put the panels up, which is not great for our case because we don't have really have the pre-built modules at that point. So normally you'll do the normal the, the lower the first row first. All the or put put all the panels together. Yeah. Before you start on the second floor. Mm -hmm. And that's where the issue of when you put the second floor uh, panels on, how to overlap the uh, yeah you'd have to split you'd have to slit kind of slit on the sides there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it looks in practice, like when we build the sample panel, whether we think it's sufficient. What we did before, we can tell you, is that we left one side of the exterior panels loose, so that we can slip the insulation, the, the house wrap underneath there. Now, it's kind of messy, because then you you got it loose, and then you're screwing it back on, you're kind of like make, folding it underneath, you're putting it under. Which we're trying to do this better this time around, but we haven't built this detail out. Uh, I could see the slitting solution and maybe just putting putting just a little bit more house wrap out there, just maybe like little patches on the where the seams are, uh, and then just attach it with with staples and stuff like that. So it's easy. Uh, it's really easy to like patch up little spots as long as you have the bulk bulk of it correct. The thing we're trying to optimize for is getting these self-contained edges that you don't have to like mess with, like screwing around with uh, massaging the the house wrap to like fold underneath and stuff like that. Um, now that still leaves. Uh, if you if you look at before here, there's this band right here that doesn't. So this is the exterior siding. And that's going to be like, okay, it's going to be on top of these panels too. But you see this band here that's left open, right? That we have to cut more of these to fill that gap. And in fact, there's another one up there, right? So we're going to have to cut more strips to fill that gap up on top. That's where the roof is and here where the floor and top of the first story panel is. So that, that we're going to have to button up with more cuts of this exterior plywood so there's a bunch of cutting like as far as what the build process is there's a bunch of cutting um, of these panels well, for the strips and also for the edge because these panels are a little bigger than 48 right now because of the overlaps so we need to cut off like a, just a little sliver off the edge like 3 8 or something which would otherwise you'd, you'd create that gap if you use the whole width. So uh, the other way to go about this is you can just use plain exterior plywood. Now plywood does not look as good as the, these panels that we're using, so we want to use these rather more attractive panels. Um, but we have the issue on the edge. So the, the, the kind of the characteristic look of the CD home with kind of the vertical slits in it, you wouldn't get that from plain plywood, and it wouldn't really look as good. It'd kind of look. Uh, less refined. Um, so, well, let's go back to the CAD CAD file to Where's see how. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, the back on the slide, so the uh, mm -hmm. sort of the tan square is the sheeting, and the light gray square is the the wall module itself as we built it, and then the sort of beige rectangle that overlap. Um, I guess house wrap. If, so yeah, you can label some let's label some more here. Open it for editing and we can label it. Yeah, it should be open for editing, right? Okay, great. So we can add we can add some more details. The gray, I'm gonna put a green barrier around it. No, not that. But this that's as built modules. That's the roof. That's the middle. Yeah, so the 
the green shows what we actually built the outline of what we built um, this is house wrap And that's the red is ex exterior ply. <clears throat> yeah, so we should maybe like put like one, two, three for the, the strips of house wrap. Well, the, that's house wrap one. This, this main one and this one here that's two and the third one is that one because we're going to need to cover the top there too yeah does that clarify anything or confuse things? Uh, no, that helps a lot. And this is the front view or the side view? That's front view going vertically. So now what's the... Okay, so we know that there is nine feet. This house gets actually pretty tall. Um, you'd think, oh yeah, it's only these two eight-foot panels, like or eight and nine. It's a little more. So we got nine feet there. You got eight there, which you got about sixteen, at least sixteen, so it's twelve plus four, sixteen inch there. And about twelve inches here. Plus top plates, I mean there's two top plates top plate here, top plate there, so it's another three inches. Um, anyway, it's like 9 plus 8 is 17, 18, 19, 20. We're getting close to 20 feet at the top, which is pretty tall at that point. Uh, let's just return to the CAD file there, which reflects some of these things. So, in, so here's the batten which we don't have to put on now, that's later, and when we put them on we can run them all the way up they come in 16 foot pieces, they're already stained, so we're not going to attach it like here, we're going to attach a 16 foot piece once we're at the house level, so that you have to worry about that now and here is this SAWP self-adhering waterproof barrier so the seam yeah, we'll put that later. So exterior plywood. Take that off. Still gasket. So on one side, we'll do this. When we wrap it around, we can just wrap it like a one inch on a top and bottom. We want to put that now so we don't have to do that later. Uh, so across the whole side, I didn't draw the detail of wrapping around like an inch to the top and bottom, but that's a good idea. That doesn't hurt anything. So make sure you don't get the little seam happening like right at the corner by wrapping it around. That's something worth worth writing down. So here we could do sill gasket.
wrap it we have to do it only on one side because the panel next to it will have its own so you just need one side attach sill gasket let's just do a convention of on the right hand side if you're looking from the outside so say you're looking at the panel it's will work as we start from the outside when you attach these panels outside you just keep moving to the right um, right moving from zero to the right to the left corner. but you can start in all four corners too right. as well but let's just say okay we're moving to the right whenever we're building attach so attach the gasket on right hand side of panel when looking from outside Okay. Um, back to the CAD. So we covered the silk. Oh wait, that's uh, oh that's the other one. Get this other one open. Oh, great. Okay, so we're stripping the, the parts here. Um, so we talked about the three layers of insulation. How long is the insulation for the eight-foot panel? Uh, Marcel, one question. In the yeah. cat, there's the seal gasket is kind of, uh, let's say, overlapping with the half piece. Is that intentional because it can squish kind of uh, together? Or Okay, let's answer that question. Um, so, sill gasket, what's the issue about it? So, that's the sill gasket. Just uh, make the sill gasket visible and the, the half 2x6 part. Yeah. And, and there's just a uh, kind of Overlap kind of. Uh, oh, it meaning. overlaps on the th onto the wood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's just an accuracy. Yeah, you want to have it be outside of it. Yeah. If you look okay, at, yeah, well, actually, it is outside. Kind of visible, and then it yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it's actually it is outside. It's it can squeeze, so you close up the the gap space. But it actually is okay. It's it's on the outside of it. Uh, so I think we're okay there. And so here you're looking at what are we looking at? That's the bottom of. Where's the bottom of the panel and top? How do we orient ourselves? Oh, okay, that's another detail, um, which we're not putting in. But there's also Z flashing there which eight foot wall okay okay so top and bottom here it actually looks like this uh, so there's another detail we don't have to worry about that because that we put on a house but this is where the exterior plywood goes just for your reference for later this will be important because there's not only the exterior plywood but Z flashing there um, Like this. That's that's a metal metal piece. That's uh, if there's water down there, it basically prevents the water. Like if the water seeps down in there, it just keeps dribbling down above the plywood below. So there's details. So you gotta consider things like this. Um, we don't have to worry about it now. That that we put in at the end. So here we do actually want to leave this edge unbuttoned so we can slip in the Z flashing underneath it. So the screws down here, mm, wow there's a lot of details to take care, take care of here, but when we put on the, so this, this brings up, uh, when we do the panels, the exterior panels on the second floor, because we have this Z flashing, you can't leave this 
you can't screw down the bottom edge. It's not a big deal because you just take out the screws. That's part of the reason why we're doing screws. Uh, until we nail this or until you graduate, you want to use screws. Because a nail, it's like when you mess up a nail, it's pretty hard to take it out. Uh, so until graduation we do this. Um, and I don't know if we have ever switched to full nailing because, uh, I don't know, we may or may not, I don't know. But screws are definitely convenient because you can take them out. And some of the parts we want to have screws because we're designing for expandability. So we're making certain parts explicitly dismountable or, or disassemblable. Uh, now with this detail, this actually brings up another interesting point about the height of the Wait, do we draw all this already in the panels? Then we hung it down. So can somebody remind me of the detail for the second floor panels? Where is the top? We did do the plywood, right? So where are we ending up with the top of the plywood? Do we put it down about one inch or we are at the top? I actually don't remember this detail. What do we end up doing? Um, so who's done a second story panel? Not sure. I'm forgetting myself. Um, so yeah, so now like all these details of where things end up matter because we're building panels up vertically one on top of each other. So let's take some measurements here. So in this one I would expect to be 3 8 inch under 8 feet. yes that's the case in which case we have just a little bit of overhang of the the plywood so actually here we're leaving it equal let's see what do we do in the overall model let's download let's take a look at the detail because we're going to build this now so we're going to make sure we're building this correctly um, so if we go to CAD let's pick say module you know, 24. Where are we here? Hmm. Oh, I see. So that's. Uh, let's see what we got. I see. So yes, we've got a little bit of overhang at the bottom here. There is going to be Z flashing, so I think it could be could be a good way to do it. Um, we keep it simple by aligning the top edge, because remember in the first floor panels we're explicitly dripping it down because we want to drip over the foundation, like like we talked about, um, and and we don't have Z flashing down there. Here we are using Z flashing because now you've got the panels, the, the exterior panels that are below this, so you do want to have that Z flashing at every seam. That's just industry standard. If you've got a seam of two things, two panels, um, safest way to, to seal it up is the, the Z flashing where it goes under one and above the other. That's, that's the standard there. Uh, so here I think we can be fine with this because Z flashing is put underneath here. Um, now, one point, yeah, this actually does bring up a point about what if we were to, like, you know, talking about live design here, okay, improvements, now that we're looking at it in more detail, what if we hang this down halfway? It doesn't really hurt us to do so. You know, so, say you drip it down three quarters of an inch. What if we used flashing where you put it on three quarters underneath here? Three quarters are more like an inch under, so can we find Z flashing where we don't have to unscrew this? And that's actually, you know, it's actually the first time I'm thinking about it in any more depth. 
but it probably would be useful to do one one inch Z flashing that you don't have to unscrew this in order to put the flashing back under there. So that's a detail to to consider, and we should probably I don't know uh, we can may or may not do that. Not too bad to just unscrew, you know, screw the few screws, but it is extra work and you're up there at, um, it's only, well at that level it's only the 9 foot mark, which is still on a ladder up there. Uh, so it's relatively safe to do that, not too bad. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's an interesting consideration. We, we know that for the first floor, we're the 1.1 inch overhang, that's all good here. Here we can question, okay, do we want to just move it down or not? We can save that for when we build these. So what else can we see here? Okay, let's take a look at any other details. So let's close that one down. We definitely have the Z flashing <coughs> in there. The Z flashing that, that's being used here, that's like two inches or so, or one and a half. What is that? It's one and a half. Yeah, so that's, that's its dimension. Let's go. keep going through. So we've got the front panel, we have the exterior plywood just got hidden. That's the house wrap that's right, so I'm actually just putting a placeholder in for the house wrap. So close that down. Okay, so we have the sill gasket, take that off. And then we've got into, we're getting into the, the framing, so that's all framing. And then the top plate here, and then a Z flashing. So that's the makeup of the standard panels. Should build them. Should do that. So, what are we able to do right now? We're able to cover all the house wrap on the first floor modules. Put in. Uh, so do quality control on the first floor modules, attach the, the house wrap as well as the, the front panels. And if we wanted to complete, so there's two ways to do it, like we can do that and maybe rack them again or just do it all, which is look at the diagram we started looking at yesterday, which was, where are the electrical boxes? Uh, for that we have to go back to the wall module design guide. So actually there's a bunch of them that just have simple outlets and we can do a bunch of those. So um, like we discussed yesterday. Let's go to simple diagram of, of outlets every 12 feet in somewhat more or less logical locations. So if we go look at the first floor, there's a bunch of wall switches and then um, both wall switches and the outlets, they go into the same kind of an electrical box, like one of those blue or gray boxes. Um, here there's one, so there's a door, you've got a, a plug-in right next to it, We've got on the other side, here's the electrical panel, that's where we'll put the, put the power meter and electrical box right here, so everything comes effectively out of here. 
and why there's that that hole there is that because we're just leaving a a two inch hole for the conduits to go basically all the electrical wires to go into the second story so we're going straight up from the first panel to the to the second floor uh, we're running so here like here's the double door so we've got a wall switch for a light exterior light that was for, for the exterior light and we've got a, a wall switch sorry a power outlet so power outlets just standard 15 amp power outlets there's a 30 amp outlet here 30 amp it's a different plug um, there's going to be the the cooking range there which is we're trying to do the thing of highly electricals like the heat pump is electrical uh, because we're assuming that we can do off-grid solar like with inexpensive solar panels so that's a good idea for for design with low energy like zero energy houses where if you have enough panels and you're running all these loads during the day and have things like a super efficient fridge which you turn just power management where you turn everything that you don't need at night you can get away with a, either a very small battery system um, or I mean you have to have some storage unless you go without electricity after after night now there are laptops that they have built-in batteries but you can definitely do like the refrigeration part or heating cooling like imagine you put a lot of attention to insulation and then you you pump the AC pretty pretty high at, at during the daytime so that you can breeze through the night without AC like if you have enough insulation in your house and it's hot outside that's possible so that's that's one way to do it low low energy but you do want to have but even if you do use like a little trickle of energy at night just for some essential things even if you're connected to the grid this system is we're, we're keeping that in mind here so that if you do off go off grid then just the minimal battery backup system would be sufficient um, yeah in the winter in the summer during the daytime you're perfectly fine like this is for the daytime you can go all electrical like not even gas if you use like we're using an induction cooktop which is like twice as efficient as it's regular or whatever the figures there are plus the heat pump which is electrical so for the heating and cooling it's all electrical including the the stove induction cooktop and electrical on-demand heaters which which use less, ener less energy so in this system we're building the capacity to go off grid very easily uh, we are actually getting a bunch of uh, nickel iron batteries because th those are lifetime design batteries uh, to experiment with. Okay, do, do they work really well? We never used them before. We just used lead acid storage batteries. But it sounds like the the nickel iron batteries sound like a good idea. I mean, they're definitely proven long-term track record of how long they'd live. So instead of throwing out your batteries, which is a serious environmental issue, like if you're going to be throwing out your batteries every few years, um, no, it's the batteries are not all that. Uh, so you either go to a lifetime design battery, or try to do something else. If you talk about ecological integrity for the infinite future, you, you, uh, yeah, I mean batteries, they're good for laptops and things. But once you get into larger things, you're talking about a lot of chemicals that end up in the environment. So um, I, I am a fan of nickel iron though because nickel and iron are quite abundant and you've got potassium hydroxide which is lye like the, that's the electrolyte so it's chemically wise it's pretty benign um, there's no like heavy metal pollution or stuff like that that comes out of that and the extraction of it is it's decent I mean iron is decent you can definitely recycle iron and nickel does not seem to be in short supply one of the main considerations is okay well do we have abundant resources that we're building on nickel iron pretty much does qualify like and if you ever go into the earth's core I think the earth's core is like a hundred percent nickel is that so uh, what is the core made of I was kind of surprised by this but what is the earth's core is that true yeah it's iron and nickel nickel iron battery so we have a big built-in nickel iron battery that we're sitting upon um, now extraction of that is you know you gotta dig way, dig way down but 
Okay. Uh, we're not, in principle, short of those elements. <laughs> um, okay. Electrical plant containing a bunch of outlets. What we can do is correlate. You can see which panels these are on. Um, and this is like this most rudimentary diagram. The green ones are GFCI. So that means the when we put in the actual outlet, it's got it's the GFCI, the ground fault circuit interrupter. It's a little micro circuit in there with a microcontroller that when it senses that you got a short, it turns it off immediately. We actually use it on a 3D printers so you don't get zapped if there's any short it turns it off immediately uh, that's that's a thing for bathroom areas and wet areas so for example the laundry where we plug in the washer that has to have GFCI by code the kitchen areas and bathroom areas have to have that by code and then if you go outside which you see the ones on panel 23 and panel 4 the green things outside that's going into the carport and to the outside outlet those also have to be GFCI so that means that two panels have exterior connections that, that's good so you can have power outside to run tools um, but that's that's kinda it we can take what we can do is maybe take a panel like uh, say a simple one like the one in the corner which is what 17 or so um, maybe we build that as far as the full build out well that's a complicated one that's corner so maybe take like this one here which sounds like 20 we can take one one simple panel we can go through it well that one doesn't have electrical so we wouldn't do the electrical in there but maybe we do one well let's start without electrical first let's complete one from A to Z let's just walk through one like let's say like this one which has no electrical, well, like this one too, that has no electrical. So take a simple wall panel, we should do the everything around that. Um, mm -hmm. Where to from here? So do people feel like doing some CAD work or go into the workshop and build some of these things? I'm open to either of those pretty much uh, goes through the considerations of how do we finish up the panels. Well, we got to put in the electrical and, and, and all the insulation, sill gasket, all the details we mentioned. Um, so let's see, is that relatively clear from, so the pages we try to capture it is these, so house wrap, exterior panel, insulation, sill gasket, um, and then any electrical, uh, the seams, what would the CAD work be um, that we would need to do? Here what we can try doing is, we worked a little bit for example on on the electrical box, we kind of went through this exercise to do that we can start, let's see, we don't have to do that right now, but eventually we want to have a full CAD model that's got the electrical and everything else. I think the priority would be just to get the thing built and, and then we can retrofit the CAD. It's important that we understand where the the panels, uh, the say the electrical boxes go in a panel. So maybe um, just to get the physical practice in CAD, what we could do is, okay, say there's a wall switch. Okay, let's put in a wall switch. We already did that junction box plus, well, let's see, we did the junction box, but we did not do the actual outlet. So useful exercise would be like, okay, position an actual outlet in a panel or position a wall switch in a panel, which are things that we'll be doing uh, pretty soon in actual life. Um, that would be a useful exercise. We can tag team on it. So electrical placement. So let's do a electrical placement exercise. So 
So for that, let's download a panel that we have and actually retro. So do one panel where we're actually retrofitting the electrical as if it were in real life. So let's select one. Let's see which one do we want to pick. So a simple one. How about a panel two? Yeah, panel two. That's got an electrical outlet and it's a simple panel. I'll start it. I'll say and then share your screen when when you're doing it. So I'm sharing my screen right now. Uh, so I'll download panel two and retrofit it. There's also one point like, okay, if we're putting in all these details into the actual wall modules, we have the distinction between the ones we work on just to do the design and the ones positionally correct. Uh, the trick there is if it's positionally correct, is that still the original file? Well, typically not because you have to remove the sketches in order to move things around. You have to make copies. So it's no longer the original file. Um, so if we want to do a full editability, just like adding, continuing to evolve the, the actual design, you want to work at the one that's got the, all the detail, which means the one that's prior to getting positionally correct. Now, not opposed to the, like for example, there, there are assembly workflows. We can just snap one panel next to each other. That's, that's good. I think a, a good compromise would be we can uh, so once again, like the discussion of PreCAD 16 versus 19, uh, we want to think, make things compatible with 16 for highest inclusivity. We also want advanced features from 19. I think we can do it. Like for example, if we if we design the the basic panels in 16, and then we just okay open it up in in 19, and use assembly workbench if we want to do that. Or we can do it move it manually if you're not as good a, a user because you got to learn some things about the assembly. There's other workflows there. Um, I don't think I actually haven't done much with it because last time we we were playing with that. Uh, since then they came up. They, they have a new new workbench uh, on a assembly. That that workbench keeps on getting improved and new versions keep coming out and stuff like that. So it's under active development. Um, did you guys find out if the, the latest one is relatively stable or that's, that's they're highly recommended or? Um, Anyone look at that? 19 is still the, the latest stable. I think they're on 20 right now, some other minor version. Is, are they recommending the assembly for prime time yet, or not really? I, I haven't really looked at it, but um, we are welcome to, to use that if you want to do some assembly workflows, because that can take us from the, the original files that we have, then we turn them into simple copies, and then we can manipulate them rapidly. Um, so that, that can give us an advantage. But in the meantime, let's do, when we edit, like I want to download, like Sam doing wall module 2. So in the FreeCAD, there's probably a history of the simple copy. I want to do the one that's not the simple copy. I want to go right before that. Wait, no, there's also a more simple copy. So I got to go all the way back to here, which... Um, yeah, we, we have to pay some attention to w where we're editing. Like, whenever we're editing the source, we should go as far back as before any simple copy. So that's that would be a good practice. I'm not sure if we follow that throughout, but that would be the thing to do so that you're not editing a file that's only partially editable. Like, some of the things are already the solids and other parts still have sketches. Because if we, up, say, update this one, we would put in the sketches of the uh, the electrical, but nothing else is editable. So I think we should probably go back to the source where everything is editable um, to keep it to keep everything organized. So I'd, I'd go back to here, which is this 5th of July version.
so I'd expect all the sketches to be in here. Well, it's not even. So yeah, this we should pay a little more attention to this. This probably got copied from another one that was a simple one. So um, what we should probably do is make note. Okay, this was copied from something else, and yeah, we're suffering from some organizational issues, but organizing all the files. Um, but this is sufficient to work in. If we edit this, as long as we get it positionally correct into the final, we'll be okay. Um, but let's add a box. And there are some considerations like, okay, which side of the panel, like you can put the, we kind of discussed the junction box can be in the middle. Uh, where are we here? Uh, one thing we do want to do is minimize the number of crossings like if you do have to cross wires from one bay to another so there's going to be a, a utility channel here okay if you look from the side um, so this is the kind of considerations to think about let's erase some of all these sketches some of these distances okay so we're looking at it from the side the utility channel will be <coughs> where where's the bottom and top well since the panel is overhanging here that's the exterior plywood that's the bottom so the utility channel is here one consideration when we this is going to be built up if you remember we're going to put um, across here. We're going to build this up actually by putting in a, a small space spacer, like a one by two here and at the bottom, so that we have like three quarter gap for the wires to run. It's a like a flat channel, so the wires can cross across these without having to drill through them. So we'd like to stick to that principle. Uh, make it designed electrical so you have to do minimal crossing so for example if you wanna put an outlet first of all you can put the outlet on either side and it's con it is convenient like based on the 12 foot between outlets requirement you might wanna make it on one side or the other or in the middle it depends it could be very convenient to put an outlet like on right or left it just depends where you are so if we look at the rough electrical guidelines here here this is actually towards the top there and why so we wanted to get the spacing just just for spacing purposes this outlet is towards the top of panel number two the pink one here it's towards the top so let's follow that and that's because then we made it more equidistant from this one the next one here and this next one here like we didn't want to crowd everything into the corner so it's you got two outlets here and then um, this whole space wouldn't have an outlet so we just try to space it out evenly it's just a, I mean it wouldn't kill you if you put it here but let's let's follow this diagram and say okay we're gonna put it when looking from the inside we're on the left hand side so so this is our panel number two with the uh, noticing that the front paneling is not in the right position uh, that needs to be moved yeah that one so that one is the exterior ply that needs to be moved uh, that needs to be moved now so assuming that the exterior ply is yes that's the exterior side out there this is the interior we said we're gonna make that 